it just me or do people really enjoy watching behind the scenes videos and seeing how other content creators work, seeing what cameras they use, what lights they use, what storage they use. I find it pretty interesting. So I thought today I'd share with you my studio setup. Now technically this is more of a bedroom than a studio. It's basically just got a computer, a few cameras and a light slapped in it and I've called it a studio. But this is the only space I have and it's not the largest space but I feel like I've been quite efficient with it and this is where I do all my planning or my filming or my editing and of course all my sleeping Whoa! but before we get started with today's video a massive shout out to Kingston for sending me across two of their awesome SSDs they sent me this one terabyte one right here that is going to be used inside my PC right there and they sent me this 960 gig one that is going to be used for filmmaking most likely in conjunction with an Atomos Ninja 5. Now I'm going to have tremendous read and write speeds with an SSD that is going to speed up my workflow to 100 and allow every stage of the video and editing process to be that much easier and allows me to get projects done a lot quicker, exporting, importing, getting footage off cards so then I can concentrate on what's important to me and that is filming, editing and getting those videos out there to you guys. So if you're on the market for any SSDs or any storage then go and check out Kingston's website they make a lot of awesome products and I've also dropped the links to these two items right here but before we get started I am going to begin installing this SSD in my PC right there. SSD has been installed and I can't wait to work on that for all my projects but now it is time for the grand tour. So with this space there are some disadvantages and there are some advantages. Disadvantages include like I can't leave my tripods and my mic stand set up overnight because they'll just get in the way and I couldn't literally walk in and out my room. The only stand that stays up at night is my main light right here it stays in the corner but yeah it would be easier just if I could have everything set up where I wanted to so I could literally sit down and start filming but hopefully maybe one day if I get my own studio that might become an option. There is some advantages with this room my bed is only here my computer is only here so I could take one big step in the morning and I'm ready to start working on a project. Another thing I really like about this room as well is the decor. I like a lot of the background I've got here with old cameras, photos. I think if you're a filmmaker as well, customising your workspace is really important as well. Speaking on backgrounds, I think it's really important to have backgrounds when you are doing your videos because it expresses who you are, what your hobbies are, what you enjoy. Now, this is one of my backgrounds that I like to use when I'm filming. Now, it's not the perfect setup because I have got the cupboard door right here, which isn't the most nice feature to look at when you've got a nice background like this. But we can't move it over because the door's right here, so literally you won't be able to get into the room. So sometimes you have to compromise as well. But this is my shelf of kind of like a museum piece. I often just like to look at this sometimes. That might sound a bit weird, but I just do because we have some really old vintage cameras on here. We've got this Kodak Model B, 1927 this is from. That is incredible. As well for me, I think it's really interesting having these old cameras. I'm going off topic a little bit here, but bear with me. But you think, we all get excited. We know how it feels maybe to get a new camera, to get that new thing that we are really excited about. Imagine when someone was getting this camera in 1927, how excited they were to get this, even if it's something that now it's just like classed as a vintage item. Back then, this was someone's pride and joy. But anyway, that's my reminiscent and kind of way of looking at old vintage cameras and that is... Um, my museum, so if you want to have a ticket to look at the museum of free old cameras, the entry fee is £2. And speaking of money, budget. Now, I am a student, so I am not made of money. So sometimes I have to try and save money where I can, and I think we can all agree that finding a good bargain is awesome. And a key example for that in my room is my desk setup right here. This is where I spend a majority of my time whilst I am not filming my ass planted in this chair. Now we'll start with the desk. This desk is an IKEA aluminum desk, comes with a ton of storage that we'll get to later in the video. And usually this desk would cost you I think about £160 with the drawers and everything. 
This only cost me £50. I went on Facebook Marketplace and found a law student who had just graduated and she just needed to get rid of the desk. So I offered her 50 quid for it and she said yes. So that was a massive saving straight away. And this chair right here, I got it off Facebook Marketplace again, only cost me £25. Now it is super comfy for long periods of time, but it is incredibly and awfully squeaky. I need some WD-40 on it. Listen to it. It also sounds super dodgy, but that was a great saving as well. The one thing I would like is a cushion here and a cushion here. So I'm supporting my head and my back and keeping my back nice and straight whilst I'm editing. So I'm not slanted over, but usually this would cost in total 225 pounds for these two things only cost me 75 so great saving right there straight away and it's a super efficient setup on the desk i have a mechanical keyboard that sounds super satisfying when typing some people don't like it i absolutely love it and we've also got an rgb mouse you might notice a theme here rgb keyboard rgb mouse rgb computer i don't know what color i liked so i thought if i had rgb i could change it to any color i wanted to in terms of the monitor right here we've got a benq can't remember the name of it, probably something that sounds like a fax machine. But this is a 25 inch monitor with 98% sRGB color accuracy, which is perfect for color grading. I would love to have two of these monitors side by side, but this monitor is £250, so I've got a spare Samsung monitor that I use to often drag and drop footage onto my Adobe timeline. And it's really efficient having two monitors to make editing a lot easier. And behind the computer right here, we also have a USB charging station where I charge GoPros, phones, headphones, anything that charges with a USB be charged into this one right here and then I'll put it on this set of drawers right here. Now the good thing about that USB right here is there's a lion yawning at me or roaring at me is I can just move my monitor up and then access it from here then just put it down so that's pretty handy as well. Now the headphones right here I am using Audio Technicas which are some great headphones now usually they don't come with these rubber bits and they're super uncomfy after just an hour so I bought these big ones which are so comfy and I can wear these for hours and hours without getting a headache the sound quality for the price is amazing now one thing I'm gonna grab is I've just ordered it is a headphone stand right here so I could put it underneath and that will just make that a lot more easier so I can grab them rather than just literally dumping them on the floor dumping them on here so you might be interested to note as well that the computer that powers my whole setup is this custom rig that I built myself so it's a miracle that it worked and turned on and it's a miracle that it still works today but inside here we've got an intel i7 8700k processor a gtx 1080 graphics card 16 gigs of ddr4 ram a asus 370e motherboard a liquid cooled cpu cooler a ton of cooling fans with four terabyte hard drive and a now a 960 gig ssd I think a computer can be like the heart of everything when you're doing your photo and video editing because you want something that's going to work with you and not against you. But yeah, that is my reliable and awesome beast right here. So I like to keep my drawers really organized. So if I start from the top, this one will have everything I usually need. My Windows tablet, my chargers for my phone, for my headphones, for the drone. Everything I need is right there. The second one is university work and um, never hardly open that one. And then with this one, I've got my laptop that needs to be sent back in for repairs i've got uh, blowers stuff like that in this one i have the masks these make for some awesome photography props i've also got my gopro accessories camera accessories and other miscellaneous items in here i've got these wipes for my camera to keep the rubber bit clean interior car wipes really good for that gopro chest mount other cables other gopro accessories all in here we also have the steel wool and the smoke bombs so if this drawer did set a light it'd be chaotic but beautiful and over here we have some other bits and bobs like the lazy susan that is like awesome for photography and filming we also have some of these like light things basically you put these in front of the light and it will change it to that color pretty awesome then we have these black perspex which are perfect for reflections and great for some product photography and i've used these in the past we have some tripod heads some other bits and bobs in here and it's all nice and organized now i like to think that all the drawers i have are quite organized but sometimes i do lose stuff but i've just cleaned them up recently so it has been a lot more helpful to grab something exactly where i know it is so if you're going to be doing photography or filmmaking or 
anything really. Having organized drawers is the best because when you think, oh, I need that one thing, where is it? Oh, I don't know, it will take me 20 minutes to find it. But if you're like, oh, I need that one thing and I've organized it, you're like, two minutes, I've got it and you just save yourself so much time and it's really beneficial. Now you might be wondering as well, where do I keep all my equipment? Well, I keep it all in this glass unit right here. This was another Facebook bargain. So do you wanna have a gander how much this was? Well, this was usually about 200 pounds for a unit like this. I got it for 30 pounds. Now, if that isn't a massive saving, I don't know what is. And also it's massive, it's bulky, and it keeps all my equipment in that I need and it's also all on display. Another cool feature of it is as well is this. So what I can do is this, boop, boop. I've got two lights in there so I can light up all my equipment as well. So this whole space right here, this corner kind of works together because right here I've got my camera bag, I've got my tripod. So if I ever need equipment, I let you come to this little corner of my room and start collecting whatever equipment I need. But in here, we have everything from lenses to magazine I've been featured in. I've got uh, lenses, I've got these uh, lights, I've got drones. Anything I could need is right here to pick up and go. I've even got power banks. I've also got a very important thing right here. This is my notebook of ideas. So if I ever have an idea, I have to put it down on paper. Often an idea would sit in my head and it would stay there. It wouldn't go. I think some people can relate to that feeling like they would get the idea stuck in their head and until they thought of every little detail, they wouldn't be happy. So what I usually do is if I've got an idea, I write it down. Then sometimes what I'll do is I'll continue to write new notes about it, like how to tell the story, what the video's about, how I'm gonna film it, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. And it really just helps me get a really nice structured video ready on paper so then when it gets to filming it's a lot more clearer and sometimes I can just refer back to the notebook if I ever need to another one is as well sometimes I'm about to go to bed and I'm like oh an idea but the thing is I don't want to turn on my phone because that will just wake me back up if I just literally go on my notebook and just turn on a lamp write the idea down I'll then wake up in the morning and go oh perfect past Curtis has came up with an idea and it's all written down on paper now this strategy really does help me out with my content and it also might help you out as well so you might want to give it a go and see what you can do but anyway I've digressed hopefully that also helped you out a little bit as well but now we'll get back to the camera cupboard so yeah jumping back to the camera cupboard there is a lot we have in here it's really good so I can like pick up equipment like oh I need my wildlife lens right there boom and then what I can do is just pick up my camera bag right here put it on there and get it all prepared so it's kind of like a workstation as well and this is also like a filming space as well I do a lot of filming on this desk right here over here I'll do uh, filming on this one because I like the wooden texture it's got here as well and then over here we have the lamp this space here that is another great place to do filming and I also like the background so I can drag these out a little bit so it gives it a bit more separation between the background so it really does work quite nicely and I do like these wooden textures I digressed again so yeah I can move equipment from here to here get it all ready on here I keep my D7500 I was gonna sell it but then decided it makes for a really good idea to keep it as a spare I've then got two GoPros I didn't sell the 7 in the end I kept it as a spare camera because I might be able to get more multiple angles I could have one in one place say for example I could have that on the inside the car then I could have that on on the roof of the car so it's a good idea to have two different GoPros I've got the Atmos Ninja 5 at the back with a couple of batteries and it really is a good structure so I can visually see everything I'm a lot better with visuals so I can literally see it all laid out and I'm like okay I need that that and that and then grab it so that's my awesome camera cupboard. Some parts of storage as well, you have to be really crafty. So where my cupboard is right here at the side, there's actually some black things that are pointing out. This is like a five in one reflector and I've got like a gray card down there. So I literally just shove them in and that's some extra storage right there. Another bit of storage that I've got, well large bit, is my cupboard right here. I also keep stuff like the light bag. Uh, this has got some extra additional lights inside if we can get it out without wrecking the joint. Uh, we have just got some extra light things for the newer light. We've also got right there, you can see this is the fog machine. So we've got the light hood and everything all in there. We've also got the spare uh, camera bag and we've also got the Ronin SC uh, bag, uh, box, gimbal box thing. And so this is just some extra storage that I've got as well here. Now in terms of the tripods, I have 
two main ones I use is KNF Concert 72 one and then I have a 62 one. This one's not in the best nick anymore because one of the legs keeps falling off. I need to contact KNF about that because it's not that old either and it's done less mileage than the other one and the other one's doing better nick but I'll sort that in the future. Now this tripod actually comes in handy as a mic stand as well because I don't have a mic stand I uh, want to get my mic as close to me as possible when I'm doing videos where I'm like sitting at my desk and my camera's away from me at a distance I want to get it as close as possible so it has one of those sections where it stretches out so I can hang it just above me and it's really convenient to get that perfect audio and that crisp sound now in terms of the light as well this is my main light it's a newer SL60W with this newer diffusion on it this has changed so much about my like content like when I'm filming inside because it's just such a really good powerful light and it's not that expensive I think with the diffuser it cost me 170 pounds so it is fantastic I've also got this light stand right here this is heavy duty but I didn't expect it to be this heavy duty when I got it so I don't even need a sandbag to support this light because it is that big and strong. I think having an important light like this and a really good key light is so important, especially if you're going to be doing filming indoors. So this right here is a kind of mock-up of a filming setup. It's not the most accurate, but usually I just have my camera set up right here looking at me here. This will be where I put the mic on and it will get the audio closer to me. And then I have my light somewhere here. I think that concludes my studio tour. Now I think I've covered a lot in this video and I think I've covered it all but yeah I really do like this space actually looking back it is a really good space and I feel like I can make a lot of great content in here and hopefully I will continue making awesome content in the future and maybe one day I will have my own studio I hope you have enjoyed today's video and enjoyed seeing this studio tour and hope it's also been helpful to you. Now, I've just realised that this video is going to be nearly 20 minutes long, if not a little bit over. So if you have made it to this point in the video, a massive thank you to you. You're a trooper and you now get free access to my museum. I must say as well, a massive thank you to Kingston for sending me across a couple of their SSDs. I can't wait to start editing this video on them and from every video from now on on SSDs, it's gonna speed up my workflow tremendously. So a massive thank you to them. And if you are in the need for SSDs or storage as a content creator or anything, go and check them out. And until next time, everyone, stay creative, stay awesome, and I'll see you in next one. Bye for now. Whoa.